Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And yes, I really do mean that. I hope you are having a fantastic weekend. It is Sunday on the East Coast of the United States, February 13th. And I want to do a couple of things. I want to make a quick update on what to expect out of the Fed tomorrow at their emergency meeting, what the results of that could be. And also, I want to correct yesterday's video when I was talking about the 2018, December 2018 Fed um, hike, uh, rate hike, then the impact it had on the markets. I was showing the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ in the right spot, but I showed the wrong spot for crypto, for Bitcoin, and for the crypto market. The markets did drop significantly, but I had the wrong spot. I got hung up in the charts as I was trying to show those to you when I was zooming in and out, so I apologize for that, but I will show you the right spot today. This is Bitcoin on the hourly right now. Uh, it is currently 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast, and it looks like what Bitcoin is trying to do is retrace this whole move that we've had recently and get back down here and test that $40,000 range again uh, before uh, the Fed meeting. So we'll see what happens and we'll see what happens when the Fed meets tomorrow. But let's take a look at what I was showing yesterday. And uh, when we were talking about December 2018, I got hung up in here. That's actually December 2017. Obviously, that was the peak of the market back then in January of 2018. So what happened was right here. This is what I was trying to show is right here is that whole area of November of 2018. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute, September, uh, November, October, November, 2018, leading into December of 2018, which is right here. All in all, that was a 51% drop. And just in December alone, it was that November, December, right before the actual rate hike, was about a 25% drop. And then you could see what happened. Bitcoin popped up a little bit in December, rode that bottom before ultimately shooting back up again in June of 2019. So from December, the bottom, December 2018, <clears throat> 2018 we'll take a look at NASDAQ again and I'll show you because that's the closest relation to this asset, uh, especially at the time. I'll show you where where that occurred. So Bitcoin dropped 2718, stayed down here. And let's take a look at how long it stayed down there. It was about 107 days from December 18 to April of 2019, uh, right in that area there where it stayed near the bottom. And again, that was, if you want to know what a crypto winter bear market looks like, this is what it looks like. This was 2018 peak dropped. You can see we had a lot of bounces, a lot of bounces, and then dropped ultimately down when the Fed, the final drop was when the Fed raised interest rates. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ again, just so that brings this into perspective in the timeframes that I was talking about here. And here is that 2018, 2019. So here is that September, uh, October timeframe I was talking about on Bitcoin where it started. And this is the NASDAQ that we're looking at right here. And then right here is, is October and then December, right in this area here. And the NASDAQ dropped in December when the Fed raised the rates about 17%. It didn't stay down very long, but it bounced right in this area and shot straight back up over about, let's look at the period of time from the bottom till it got back to where, where it lost was about 119 days. So same kind of path and track that Bitcoin was on, a little bit more straight up where Bitcoin kind of bounced around the bottom a little bit more during that time frame. But you're talking about the NASDAQ versus Bitcoin, different assets at the time, different market at the time than what we're experiencing now. So why is this important? So let's look at where it started. So back in June of 2018, that's why I said that September, October time frame. So the Fed announced in June of 2018 that it had four rate hikes in mind for the year, uh, and the market was not convinced that that's what they were going to do. Kind of similar to where we're at right now and what's been happening right now. Markets have been selling off a little bit, but they're not fully convinced or they weren't fully convinced the Fed was going to do anything, even though the Fed telegraphed it. This is, again, this June uh, 16th of 2018. The Federal Reserve voted to approve rate increases and indicated two more were coming that year to bring the total to four. However, the futures traders give the fourth rate hike just a little better than half a chance of happening. The doubt fueled over whether the US growth path can continue if the Fed will want to continue to tighten 
So that was June of 2016, where the Fed said, hey, we're going to raise rates. We might see as many as four. Fed recently now just came out last a uh, couple of weeks ago and said, hey, we might have, uh, well, they didn't say really anything, but the board members afterwards said they could see as many as four to five to six. And uh, all of the investment analysts, bankers, economists are all speculating all over the map. Nobody can agree on what exactly the Fed is going to do. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Then here's December of 2018. The Fed hikes the rate, lowers 2019 projection to two increases. So this is December of 2018 and the Fed hiked rates only a quarter of a point. And you saw what a quarter of a point did to the markets, uh, even after the markets were preparing for the actual hike, starting in September, October, November, leading into December when they actually raised the rates, kind of like where we've been. We've been preparing for the actual rate hike. The markets have been selling off a little bit, bouncing a little bit, and we'll see what happens on Monday. We'll talk about that in a second. The, this is again, December of 2018. The Fed uh, the Fed takes target range for its benchmark funds rate from 2.25 to 2.5. Again, a quarter of a point rate hike is all it took for the markets to sell off like they did. Central bank officials were forecasting two heights for the following year, down from three. However, the Fed continues to include in its statement that further gradual rate hikes would be appropriate, uh, kind of similar to what the Fed just recently said. You know, if you're... Um, if you remember what Powell said, and you can look that up recently. So let's fast forward to December 2019. Here's what spooked the market about the Fed in December of 2019. So this is a year later um, when markets, or I'm sorry, December 19th, 2018, I'm sorry, December 19th, 2018, when the markets really had that big drop. Here's what spooked the markets about the Fed. And this sounds very similar to what Powell recently said at the last meeting, the Fed failed to sound like it was ready to pull back from its tighter policy path as much as markets had expected. The central bank did hike interest rates, but it did not remove language in its statement that would imply a slower path for rate hikes. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell also rattled markets by saying the Fed was satisfied with its program to shrink its balance sheet and had no plans to change course. So what, what did Powell say recently? The big sentence recently that spooked the markets was when he said, we have plenty of room to raise rates given the strength of the economy and the jobs market. So that's where investors' ears poked up and we started to see a little bit of selling. So now what happened after that? The Fed reversed course in 2019, the year the Federal Reserve admitted it was wrong. The Fed did a major pivot on interest rates this year and central bank leaders realized unemployment could go a lot lower. Federal Reserve and its leaders have done something unusual for 2019 central bankers. They admitted they were wrong in their short and long-term outlook for the U.S. economy. This year of humility as at the Fed has led to a dramatic reversal in policy from hiking interest rates last year, this is 2019, to cutting them in 2019. This is January of 2019, this article I'm reading here, um, putting the economy on solid footing beginning 2020. Since January, the Fed began changing course. The Standard Poor S&P 500 has risen more than 600 points um, or 25%. So let's take a look at the charts. And again, what I was talking about, and this is the good news. So even though if the Fed came out and did something, uh, let's go back and look at Bitcoin again. Let's see if I can get on the right part of the chart again this time. So this is, uh, let's go back here. I'm on the daily and let's look at that area that we were looking at in the charts of December. So here's that December 2018 bottom. I've got the right point in the charts now. This is a lot harder than it looks, by the way. So I've got the right point in the charts here. When you're zooming in and out and scrolling around, you can get lost in the charts. So where's January? So when the Fed reversed course in January of 2019, it was right in this area here when markets started heading up again. So it wasn't an immediate snapback for Bitcoin. Bitcoin stayed down a little bit. Crypto markets kind of followed suit. But let's take a look at the NASDAQ. So during that time frame, like we talked about in uh, 2019, that's 2020. Here's 2019 right here. So this is that uh, this is that bottom right here. Here's December of 2018. And then January of 2019 is right here, right when the market bounced a little bit, bottomed, and then shot straight up on the Fed's reversal of course. And I remember this very distinctly because I was telling 
people that were in the markets to exit right here in September towards the end of the year in 2018 before that drop. You could see it coming because the Fed was talking about raising rates. And once we got to the bottom of the Fed reverse course, well, it was time for risk on again uh, because they just said, hey, we messed up. We made a huge mistake. We never should have done that. And then everything was fine till March of 2020. So um, that is what happened and where it happened in the charts. And you can go back and look at the articles and back check it. But it's kind of interesting how the Fed's kind of playing out the same kind of talk that we're seeing right now. Recently, the Fed comes out and says, hey, we're going to raise interest rates, but they don't say how much or how often. They don't say what they're going to do about the balance sheet. They don't say what they're going to do about QE. So the markets has to kind of guess based on the past performance of the Fed. And that's why the Fed and Powell is so careful about what they're doing and how they're going to do it. So let's fast forward to where we're at today and where that leaves us with the meeting on Monday. What are the what are the likely moves that the Fed can make? What are the likely outcomes? So one, and again, economists are all over the map on this, and, and you know, analysts are all over the map on this, money managers, fund managers, investment managers, all over the map on this. Some people think the Fed may do nothing at all and just say, hey, we're going to continue to watch, continue to be nimble. We know that inflation is a problem. We're going to act in March. They could say that. If they do that, markets will bounce. Everything will bounce. We'll get a nice little pop until we get close to March, and then we'll see what they're saying then. If the Fed comes out and says, we recognize inflation is a problem. We have to act now. We're going to immediately hike rates a quarter of a point. You'll see a drop in the markets just like we saw back in 2018, probably from this point, 10 to 20%, depending on the asset. S&P, NASDAQ, Dow Jones might drop 10, 15%. Bitcoin and cryptos will drop. Well, Bitcoin will drop 15 to 20%, maybe a little more. Altcoin markets will continue to drop some of those, maybe 20, 30, 40%, depending on the coin and depending on what sector it's in. So that is with a quarter point rate height, 25 basis points and nothing else. So what if they say, 25 basis points, and we're going to eliminate QE, our bond purchase program right now. That will give even a bigger knee-jerk reaction. Remember, a lot of the trading is set up on algorithms, if this, then that. So as these things are plugged into the algorithm, to the formula, it just triggers selling and then retail follows and you get a little knee-jerk reaction. What if the Fed comes out and says half a point rate hike, and elimination of the bond purchasing program, and we're going to start working on the balance sheet later, then that'll be even a bigger move where you'll see markets really, really sell off. You'll see a big reaction in the markets and uh, we'll see a real capitulation event. But what, what does that mean? As you saw, just like the last time and just recently, so March 2020, and sept well, uh, the January of, of 2018, January 2018, uh, 2019, you saw where the Fed reversed course and completely changed the program. Let's go back and look at this again. So this was uh, 2019. This was December of 2019, December 11th, 2019, when the Fed completely reversed course on the uh, QE. So basically came back to the table and decided in 2019 that they're going to completely reverse course, start lowering rates, and it was going to be risk on again. And you can see what happened in the markets in that time frame uh, from December 2019 on. It was pretty much straight uphill. And December 2018, we had that little bottom. Everything came back from there. So that was uh, 2019 when they said we are reversing policy and we're going to start reducing rates and it's been reducing rates ever since then and it's been uphill in the markets then when we hit the pandemic bottom it was just a constant injection of liquidity into the markets and it's been straight uphill ever since then so uh, the worst possible thing would be a half a point rate hike and elimination of bond purchasing i don't think we're going to see that they could come out and just say well we're just going to eliminate bond purchasing you might see a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction on that but it won't be a complete capitulation event if they do do that. Um, let's go back here and look at the chart uh, where I was talking about in December of 2020, where the Fed right here, where right in this area here, this is the NASDAQ we're looking at. And this is that December timeframe here where the Fed said, we're going to reverse course. We're going to lower rates. We messed up. That was, that was uh, December 2019 into uh, February, March, 2020, when we had the pandemic happen. So basically straight uphill from there, let's look at Bitcoin 
in that same time frame. Let's go back and look at December of 2019 or 2020. I'm sorry, December, yeah, 20, 2019, October, November, that's 2020. Where is 2019? Let's go back here, right before the March bottom. So there it is right there. That's that December, October, November, December is right in here. But January, February, it was straight up until the March bottom. So the markets, in my opinion, were Bitcoin was recovering from this 2018, 2019 bear market after our 2017, 2018 bear market into 2019. It was starting to recover and was getting ready to start on the bull run that we just experienced back in that February of 2020 timeframe before the March pandemic happened. And then with the injection from the Fed, it just went, you know, it did a, you know, a 15, 20 X from there. So where does that leave us now? So it's Super Bowl Sunday. There's a lot of hype. There's some ads that are going to be out in the Super Bowl with different crypto exchanges, different crypto um, companies or advertising. So it's going to be awareness. Uh, it's going to be good for the space. It's more exposure. There's celebrities, there's athletes that are taking their pay in Bitcoin and crypto. Um, so those are all good things. But it's not like everybody's going to drop what they're doing tonight and just immediately download apps and start buying crypto. So that's not going to happen. So you've had a little bit of this excitement leading up to the Super Bowl. It's going to be good for the space, going to be good for adoption, things like that. But at the end of the day, the Fed uh, rules the markets right now. All eyes are on the Fed to see what it is that they're going to do tomorrow. And we've talked about the different um, outcome scenarios of the different decisions that they could potentially make. So all we can do at this point is wait and see. And then on top of that, you have the whole situation with Russia, Ukraine, and the geopolitical global climate environment that we're dealing with right now and the impacts of that. So one thing at a time, right now we have the Fed to watch. We're probably gonna see them take some sort of action. It's highly unlikely that the Fed's gonna call an emergency meeting and not take some kind of action. The markets will have a knee jerk reaction to that uh, action, whatever it is they take, the more positive it is, the less of a reaction, the better it's going to be for markets, the more negative it is, uh, the more the markets will react and the bigger the impact. So we'll just have to wait and see. And this is all uh, for you to be prepared for what's coming and for what could potentially happen, given what the Fed has to do. And they have to test the markets. They have to start doing some things to kind of taper inflation. They have to let markets run a little bit. They're not going to let the markets collapse. Again, there's opinions and uh, different Analysts, different economists think that the Fed will step in. Some think that they won't step in, that they'll let markets kind of settle where they'll settle. The Fed cannot let the markets collapse. They have to keep the markets healthy. They have to keep them propped up. If the markets start selling off more than 30%, 25 30% for any given reason, the Fed's going to step back in and prop the markets up. So everybody knows that. The markets know that. And it would be highly unusual for the Fed not to do that. That's just too much wealth to be destroyed, given the fact that we are already seeing wealth destruction with inflation. Inflation's at a point now where it is destroying wealth. They have to raise rates, which is going to affect values of assets, including real estate. Real estate took a hit back in September of 2018 through the end of the year, just like all other assets until rates dropped again. The market came back the following spring. But that October, November, December of 2018 was a very uh, quiet time in the world of real estate around the country. It affected all markets around the country. Of course, there's always little pockets that are you know, hotter than others and pockets that are worse than others. But anyways, that's what we're watching. Those are the things that I'm looking at. Uh, apologize for missing the spot in the chart uh, yes, in yesterday's video, but I wanted to bring that to your attention today and correct that. Several people mentioned it and I appreciate that. Appreciate you looking out for that and catching that. So I could point it out, but at the end of the day, that rate hike did affect all markets. It did affect them to a pretty good degree, 10 to 20%, depending on the market you were looking at. And um, that's what we can expect this time, but they do bounce back. They always bounce back. The real question is gonna be how far do they bounce back and how high do they bounce? And uh, we'll take a look at that in some future videos in terms of what is the upside potential for the markets and for crypto moving forward. Once the Fed makes a decision, we see where things land and where they bottom, then we can start to determine where we're headed next and what our top end starts to look like. So uh, I will see you on the next video. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day.